Hello everyone. The experiment that I'll be showing you today is to find the resistance of a given wire or standard resistance using a meter bridge. So since we are using the device meter bridge, first let us understand what is a meter bridge like. This is the meter bridge. I hope you are able to see that clearly. Okay, the Wheatstone bridge works on the principle of, uh, is the principle of meter bridge. In the Wheatstone bridge, we have four resistances, R1, R2, R3, R4, arranged along the four arms of a square or a quadrilateral. Now, between the two vertices of this quadrilateral, we put the battery, like this, and between the other two vertices, we put a galvanometer. Okay, now let's understand how this is used in the same as in the meter bridge. In the meter bridge, the, this is this resistance box is used as R1. This standard resistance, here we have a 5 ohm resistance, is used as R2. Now, regarding R3 and R4, we are making use of this resistance wire, right? Constantin. Constantin. Constantin wire, which is the high resistivity wire, as the two other arms of the Wheatstone bridge to provide me with the resistance R3 and R4. The two terminals between which we put the battery is this and this. The end where we put the positive terminal of the supply that is considered as 0. The end which is connected to the negative terminal is considered to be 100. So, we have to start our values, take the values from the zero end. The galvanometer is put in this center terminal. This is connected to one end of the galvanometer and the other end of the galvanometer is connected to a device known as jockey. This, when placed on the wire, is able to give me the two resistances R3 and R4. This side becomes R3 and this side becomes R4. Okay, the aim is to verify this value of standard resistance experimentally. So, we will perform the experiment now. The principle of uh, Wheatstone bridge in which to find the unknown resistance, for example, R2 in this case, it will be R1 by R3 equal to R2 by R4. So, R2 is equal to R1, R4 upon R3. R4 and R3 we are measuring with the help of constant in wire. So, that is why this ratio is equivalent to this length 100 minus L upon L because let me show you R3 will be equal to rho L by A. R3 is the one connected to the positive end and R4 rho 100 minus L by A because if L length is measured from the left hand side then 100 minus L is the remaining. So, when you put these values, the ratio that you get R3 by R4, R4 by R3 will be 100 minus L by L. So, that is what I am using over here to find the unknown resistance X or R2. Alright, so let me start with the experiment. First of all, understand the setup, the circuit. This is the power supply. Start with the positive of this. This is the supply is using 2 volt potential difference for the circuit don't use make it more it will heat up the wire which we don't require and will also change the value of resistance so that also is not allowed so the positive terminal is connected to this left end of the meter bridge from there you go to the end and connect the second end right end to the negative terminal so this gives me the current in the wire between these two terminals, we connect our standard value resistance, standard resistance box in which we will take out a resistance to keep the balance point somewhere in the center. Okay, So, in order to do that, ensure that what you do is you take out the resistance from the resistance box almost equivalent to your unknown resistance. Though we know the value as it is mentioned on the standard resistance, but we have to verify that. So, this is the main uh, principle over here that you keep the balance. In order to keep the balance point in the center, 
take out the value of standard resistance from the resistance box almost close to the value which is given to us galvanometer i have already shown you one end of the galvanometer is connected to this terminal the one in the center and the other end to the jockey this is the jockey and it's movable it's free that's why this has to be freely available to us to be touching the wire at any point between these uh, two terminals on the right side you put the standard resistance so whose value needs to be verified the circuit diagram is this this is a circuit diagram meter bridge wire this end positive this end negative then on the top two we have the standard resistance given resistance and here is the unknown resistance the point in the center which we connect to galvanometer and the jockey see now this is my resistance box unknown resistance resistance on the wire l on length l resistance of the wire of length 100 minus l so all four arms between we have the galvanometer like see and the other two ends connected to the battery so this completes our circuit diagram and it's exactly in conformance with the wheatstone bridge okay so now we'll start with the observation resistance switch on the circuit take out the resistance c is it visible 5 ohms here yes this is the knob when you remove this knob the resistance introduced in the circuit is 5 ohms now first we will check the deflection in the galvanometer by touching the jockey to the right side see the deflection and on the left side see uh, left side the deflection is on the left right side the deflection is on the right that is the first thing that you should check after setting up the circuit that the deflection in the galvanometer when touched on the two ends of the wire is on two different sides opposite sides after that gradually move the jockey on the wire so that the deflection in the galvanometer becomes zero now in this state the bridge is called a balanced bridge when the bridge is balanced only then the ratio of resistance is applicable so see the reading 51.4 it is 51.4 and the reading in the galvanometer is zero okay so this is our first observation switch off the circuit don't keep it on this will heat up the wire okay now what you do is just increase the resistance by 0.1 for the third and fourth value and for the second one we have reduced it by 0.1 so see this 4.9 and 0.9 like this right so we have introduced the 4.9 resistance in the through the resistance box and be careful to keep the knobs all tight otherwise it will introduce extra resistance in the circuit and will not be able to give you the correct reading okay so 4.9 now once again check for the balance point See now, the reading is at zero, and on the scale, forty-eight point six. For the next value, five and five point one. See, and rest of the knobs you will introduce back in the box. Knob should be tight. Okay. Once again, check. Looking for the balance point. Okay. Forty-eight point 
okay zero and now see the value 49.9 49.7 49.7 that's my third reading okay now for the fourth reading we'll increase the resistance to 5.2 5 and 0.2 that's it be very careful don't slide the jockey okay. on the wire it will unnecessarily change the cross section 50.2 now let's see value is zero again now it is at 50.2 3 3 50.3 So once we have all the readings with us, we can calculate the value of x. Let me tell you a few more things. Number one, why is it that it is necessary not to press the jockey? Because when you press the jockey on the wire, you will tend to compress the wire and change its area of cross section. Remember, one of the condition that we have taken about the wire is the material remains the same and area of cross section also remains uniform. So we will calculate hundred minus L values. Now we'll demonstrate one calculation to you to find the unknown resistance, and the rest follow the same. You have to use this formula: hundred minus L into R upon L. See such beautiful result, 4.7. So when we take standard resistance, uh, it doesn't mean that if it's written 5 ohm, it's exactly 5 ohm. It can be a little above or below because it's an apparatus. It can be faulty. So 100% we cannot be sure of that value. But yes, by calculation, this is what we are getting. Not that we are also error free, but yes, approximately we are close to our result, uh, given value 5 ohm, and this is 4.7. All right. Thank you.